Welcome back. This is part 10 of Space Rocks, the Godot game engine tutorial where we're making a full asteroid style game. Uh, if my voice is a little rough, I apologize. I was out for a while with a cold. That's why the gap before this video. But now I'm back to it. And in this installment, we're going to add some enemies to the game so that the player has a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, let's get started. So for this installment, I've decided to start adding uh, an enemy, a little flying saucer bad guy that's going to spawn every once in a while and kind of move across the screen shooting at the player. And I'm going to use the uh, flying saucer, yeah, the little flying saucer art we have here. So let's get started. Let's make a scene for that. So we're going to make a new scene. Um, this one, I'm going to just start it with an area 2D. And we're going to do that because we just want to be able to know if a bullet or the player enters this enters this area so we know that it got hit. All right, and we're going to add a few nodes under here. We're going to add a sprite. We're going to add a collision 2D. And we're going to add an animation player. And I'll show you why we're doing that in a minute. But first of all, let's rename these. I'm going to call this the sprite. This is the collision, and oops, and I'm going to name the animation player just anim for short. So we can put the sprite. I'm going to use the green one. There we go. I think it's a little bit on the large side, so I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. For the collision, we're going to use a we're going to use a circle shape. We'll make a circle shape and just make that the size of the texture. Okay, let's save this in our scenes. Enemy, good. And now the reason I added this animation player node is I want to have this, let's hide the collision for a second. I want to have this flying saucer look like it's spinning. So I'm going to use the animation player to give it a spin because we want to basically take the sprites rotation parameter and have it steadily change. So what we need to do is we need to make a new animation. We'll just call, call this rotate. And now we get a little timing track here, right? The default length is one second and it steps by point, point 0.1. So play the animation, right? It just goes from there to there. Well, at the beginning of the track, we want our sprites rotation, or the sprites rotation is what we're going to alter. So if we go over here to sprite and rotation, we see a little key, and we can click that to add a new keyframe for the transform slash rot property. And that's going to be set at zero. So if I then move the playback to halfway along the track. So I'm going to half 1.5 seconds. I'm going to change this to 180 degrees and I'm going to click keyframe again. So now it's rotating from, see if I step along, it smoothly interpolates between those two, right? And back here at one, we want to go to 360, which is a full rotation, All right? So now, as we, oops, and of course I've got to add it as a keyframe. Forgot to click the key. There we go. So now we've got a full rotation if we hit play. Right? So we'll click this and make it a loop, this button. Now if I hit play, there we've got a spinning spaceship. And what we can also do is on our animation here, we can alter the speed, like maybe I'll slow it down a little, half the speed, you know, maybe, maybe 0.6. There we go. So now that'll just continue to rotate, constantly playing back this animation. All right, now we want to make this, this guy fly around the screen. And I thought about a few different ways of doing that, right? We could go over here and we could just 
have a timer and we instance it every once in a while and spawn it off the screen somewhere and have it move you know across the screen and exit on the opposite direction or something like that but that's kind of boring i like to have them kind of fly around in various paths so for now and i'm not sure if i'm going to permanently do it this way but this is the way i've come up with for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new scene and the root of this is just going to be a node and this is going to be called enemy paths so i'm going to save this and all we're going to make in this enemy paths scene is some path 2d nodes that will describe some paths that this um, that this spaceship can follow. And if you're unfamiliar with the path 2D, um, I did do a little video on it, which I'll link to below, um, on how you use the path follow, which is what we're going to do once we have the paths drawn. So I'm going to skip the drawing the paths part, so I'll be right back with some redrawn paths. Okay, and we're back, and I have I've added three different path 2D nodes to this scene. This is the first one, which is going to start over on the left and just sort of move through this, move directly across the screen. Uh, I have this center one, which kind of is just going to start up at the top and loop around. And then I have the third one, which is going to come in and do a big loop through the center of the screen before it goes off the opposite side. And so these three paths are going to be just randomly we're going to randomly select one when we spawn an enemy and just have it follow so if you're not familiar with path 2d it's very easy to work with you know you just use these little control buttons up here to create to create the points of your curve and then also grab the handles to control the the path right you can drag these around and change things around and i'm okay with these you know, later it'll be easier for us to adjust these and replace them with different paths, smooth them out, change them around however we want, uh, because the code is just going to load these, load this scene. We're just going to instance this scene and pick one of these nodes out of it. All right, so let's on our enemy. We're just going to add an instance of that of that enemy paths node so that we will be able to access it. All right, so now let's make a script on the enemy. So I've gone ahead and made one here. And so we're going to get a reference to, uh, to that enemy paths node so that we can use it. And then there's a few other variables we're going to need. We're going to need to choose which path out of those children we're going to, we're going to follow. Uh, we're going to need to make a path follow to D node, and we are going to need to create a remote node, which I will we'll get into in a second. And we're going to set our speed, how fast we want our little flying saucer to travel. So in the ready, let's set process to true. Let's randomize. And so the first step is we need to pick that random path. Well, if we do pass.get children, that gets the full list of, that gets us an array holding all of those children. And so we want to select one of them. And the one we want to select is just a random number mod the get child count. And then we will have a random path. Now we need to create that path follow 2d node and that's the one that that's the one that's going to actually you know, trace the path along that and so we add that and we need to add that as a child to the path now we've got our path follow 2d now we need to create our remote node and that's just going to be a node 2d that's going to be a child of follow. And the reason for that is when you use the path follow 2D node, the child, any child of this path follow 2D is what will 
follow the path is what will have its coordinates set to the coordinates along the path. So it needs to be a child. So we're going to, this is just going to be a placeholder node 2D that's going to follow the path. And then we're going to set our enemy's position to match it. Okay, so that's it. So now we've created all the nodes we need. And actually, you can see if we, uh, if we run this, if we look at the remote inspector, you'll see we've, oh, we've selected path number two. We made our path follow, and then there's our node 2D as a child of it. Now we just need to do the movement. So in our process, we're going to take the follow and set the offset to whatever the offset currently is, plus our speed times delta. And that's going to make this node 2D move. So we just need to set the position of our main node, you know, our area 2D, to whatever the remote's uh, global position is. And that should do it. So let's give it a try. Oh, there we go. Looks like we're following the one that just path number one, the one that started at the bottom and went up here. Ah, but we are looping. By default, when you create a path follow 2D, you get a you get a loop. Meaning when it when the offset reaches the maximum, it goes right back to the start. I'm just trying it a couple times to see us do another path. Ah, here we go. I think this is the one that's going to go up and around. That's good. So we don't want it to we don't want it to loop. So if we go over here, we can say follow dot set loop to false because we're going to want to despawn the flying saucer when it reaches the edge. But you also might have noticed that when we run it our flying saucer isn't spinning, right? Our animation isn't playing. How come that is the case, right? Here, when we look at it in the inspector, right? Animation is set to play. It's active. How come? Well, there's an option right here, auto play on load. We need to set that. If you don't set that, then in your script, you have to go here and tell the animation to play in the ready. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our nice little spinning flying saucer. I like it. And now what we want to do is just do a queue free when we leave the screen. So we're going to use a visibility notifier for that. Visibility notifier 2D. I'm just going to name this visible. And we're going to use its exit screen signal. We just connect it. So when it exits the screen, we're going to queue free. And that is it. Now we have our enemy movement and does what we want when it spawns. And we've got a few paths. We can go in and add some more paths. If we get bored with these, we can, you know, we can add a little bit, make the paths, we can make the paths wobbly. So it looks like a more of a wobbly path when it follows, all that kind of thing. We could randomize the speed a little bit so it looks like it's uh, not always exactly the same. All right, so in the next installment, we will add these to our main. We'll start spawning them over here based on a timer, and we will start having them shoot at the player. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.